now with our series Addicted To. Today we are looking at technology. Charlie Brackey cannot remember how long ago video games took hold of him, but he does know he was very, very young. While a gaming addiction is not technically an actual medical diagnosis, Charlie and many others are convinced that it's very real. Uh, as his gaming habits have affected his college education, his ability to pursue his career, and his overall quality of life. He says at times he would spend more than 12 hours a day lost in a virtual world. Watch. I actually don't remember when I started playing video games because I was so young. It's kind of something that I've just always had in my life. I was definitely an addict no later than fourth grade. I had found a game called Ultima Online, you know, this huge world to explore, and I just, I fell so deep into that game. It was when I started always thinking about the game. I, I couldn't stop when I was at school. I couldn't wait to get home so I could get on the computer and start playing. Normal kids that weren't addicts weren't playing 12 hours a day, and I was. I was trying to get money uh, from mowing people's lawns so that I could buy my own computer so that I didn't have to share. Um, you know, I was trying to get good grades so that my parents wouldn't make me get off the computer in order to study. Uh, everything even back then was lined up so that I could spend more time in a digital world. I was going downhill so quick and there was nothing that was going to stop me. I started gaming as a way to cope with being bullied, but then I started using that for more and more different stressors in my life that I have a, a big exam coming up and so if I game I don't have to think about it. I was a straight A student. I had a 4.0 GPA all the way through high school, and so anytime my parents would confront me about how often I was playing video games, I would come back with an argument of, what would you rather I be doing? You know, all of my homework gets done, my grades are amazing, in like every other aspect of my life, I was doing phenomenally well. My junior year was when everything fell apart. I had gotten to the point where I was gaming probably 60 hours a week. So in the second semester of my junior year at Indiana University, I, I dropped out. I was failing all of my classes at that point, and I moved back home with my parents. I felt very alone and desperate, and so I started planning suicide because I couldn't see any other way around this. That this was the only way for me to beat video games was to kill myself. And so I started buying the equipment I was gonna need for it. I started writing out my notes. I had a full plan. I knew exactly who was gonna find me. I knew exactly when I was gonna do it. Um, I had everything in place. Charlie's with us here today. Charlie, welcome. I'm glad to be here. So what stopped you? What stopped you from taking your own life? I, I got really lucky, honestly. Uh, my parents came out to visit me in Virginia. I was living just outside Washington, D.C. at that point. And normally when they would do this, we would meet at my brother's house. And on this particular visit, they surprised me and showed up at my apartment. And they could see immediately that you know, my dog's food and water bowls were empty. It was like four in the afternoon and I hadn't showered yet that day. Uh, there's trash all over my apartment, and they knew right away that things were really bad. And that was, that was when they sat me down and said, you know, we know you're gaming again. What do we need to do to fix this? What's, what's the solution? You wanted to go for the most extreme option? What, what is that? I, I did. So when, when my parents sat down and we were chatting over what do we do to try and beat gaming once and for all, they didn't know about my suicide plan, but obviously I, I knew how close I was to the end. And so I was kind of looking at this as my one last shot, that either I'm going to finally beat video games or I'm gonna take my plan and run with it. And so I, I decided to just go for, well, let's find a rehab facility that will take a video game addict. And we sat down right then on my couch and started Googling who will take one. Mm -hmm. And was it hard to find somebody who would help you? Uh, it was not particularly easy then. I was running mostly into substance abuse facilities yeah. and most of them were not willing to take a video game addict because I wasn't using opiates or drinking or anything. But it's not totally unlike drinking or a food addiction, if you will, because it's everywhere. In today's day and mm -hmm. age, technology 
is literally everywhere. Absolutely. And you had tried many times to quit and couldn't. Yeah, I, I had tried to quit twice on my own. And you know, the first time I only lasted about four weeks. The second time I lasted about two and a half months. And I, I couldn't do it on my own. And I absolutely agree that it is, it's not inherently different from any other addiction. Uh, I, I look at it as if I wasn't gaming, I probably would have ended up an alcoholic or something because I was using whatever was handy. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was video games. One of the reasons you, you took to it was as an escape. You, you mm -hmm. have an older brother with whom you're fine now, Correct. but you felt bullied by him as a kid. Yeah. And, and I thought it was interesting, you told our producers, for you, it was an escape. It was just sort of a safe mm -hmm. place. Yeah, it absolutely was. It was, I mean, physically, the computer in my parents' house was in the corner of the house. And I always kind of felt like it was an out of sight, out of mind sort of a thing, that if I went off and I was on the computer, then nobody's going to bug me. Mm -hmm. And so it absolutely was just an escape from any bullying situation. And I think in a lot of households, it's used as a way of making sure nobody bugs anybody. You know, like a kid can easily spend hours and hours and hours in front of mm -hmm. the computer. It's easy for the parents. It's Absolutely. easy for the kids uh, until it isn't easy anymore. I, there, I know there are a lot of parents out there who are worried about how much is too much with respect mm -hmm. to their own kids. When we come back, we're going to talk about the signs um, of whether your child might have a problem that needs your immediate attention. We're back now with Charlie Brackey, who says that by the age of nine, he believes he was addicted to gaming. He describes a life that was consumed by this obsession to the point where he even considered taking his own life. We're very glad you did not. Me too. So you had the, you go in, you get help. Mm -hmm. Is the therapy anything like, I mean, is it a 12-step program? It was a combination of a lot of things. Um, the first step was just detoxing. You know, get me totally away from all technology so that there's absolutely no way I can use at all. Mm -hmm. um, the second step was trying to rebuild a lot of the coping systems that I didn't learn over the course of my life because I just always resorted to hiding in video games. You had to start feeling, mm -hmm. feeling I more. I had to start dealing with all of my problems head on and, and attacking the emotions as they came up rather than just burying. So you, one of the gifts and curses in your life has been how smart you are. You mm -hmm. were, you say in the piece, you were getting 4.0, you, you mm -hmm. were getting straight A's, your parents didn't think there was a problem. Um, then you fail out of college, you, you mm -hmm. had to drop out of college because your grades were so bad. Um, and so for the parents out there right now who are looking at their kids saying, my kid too has straight A's. My kid's not showing any behavioral problems. My kid's just using this as a hobby. What would you say they need to look out for? The biggest piece I think is just balance. You know, I, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with playing a little bit of video games every now and then. But for me, it was four to six hours every single day when I got home from school. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing else in my life. I wasn't doing sports. Uh, it, it was video games. I, I went to school and did the obligations I had to so that I could come home and play video games. Also with us today is Hillary Cash. She's the co-founder of Restart Life and has some expertise in this. Hillary, thank you. What would you say are the warning signs? And I know as a, as a mother, we, you know, you see the kid on the iPad and we have limitations, but I always wonder how much is too much. I think if you start seeing your kid being irritable, socially withdrawn, um, depressed, anxious, sleep problems, starting to lie and be deceitful. Uh, these are some of the signs. And this is the, this is the place where you actually found treatment. Mm -hmm. Because that, why aren't there more of these treatments available in 2018 America? This is a major thing for a lot of people. I have wondered the same thing <laughs> for many years. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get help with something like this. I do want to tell the audience that the Entertainment Software Association, which is a group that represents the game industry, told us legitimate science, objective research, and common sense all prove video games are not addictive. By misusing the word addiction, which is a medical term, society demeans real compulsive behaviors like alcoholism and drug abuse, which deserve treatment, compassion, and care. Can I just ask you what you think of that? Do you think video games are addictive? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, they tell us they're not, and yet I have, I have someone sitting here saying his addiction to them almost ruined his life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's up for the audience to make up its own mind on whether they are or they aren't. Um, what are you doing now? Did you get a job after rehab? I, I did. I work at Costco full time. I'm also going back to school studying accounting. How can you work at Costco surrounded by all that electronica if you have a gaming addiction? It, it was something I honestly just had to work back up to. I came out of rehab and I started just adding each little piece back into my life to see how I would respond to it. And 
if it posed any threat or any problems, I removed it again. And are you clean now? I've been totally without any form of digital gaming for a little over two years. Good for you. Thank you. Do you use an iPhone? Do you use a, you know, an iPhone or a Droid? I, I do have a smartphone again. I have monitoring software on it and an accountability partner that will call me out if he sees any video game apps being used. Mm -hmm. um, I did end up working back up. I have a laptop again, but again, accountability software on it. And I also made sure to get a really crappy computer that can't run games well to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> get the crappy computer. Yes. Smart. Charlie, thank you so much. You're very Thanks welcome. For Thanks for having me. And for more information, you can visit our website at today.com slash Megan Today. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.